Hey guys, welcome back. We are here with Clayco and it's really exciting to finally get her here to speak about her work. How are you feeling today, Clayco? Feeling awesome. Thanks, Jesse. Ah, you're welcome. So, um, Clayco is one of the artists that is also featured in the Dawn of a New Decade show that is running currently through Staten Island Arts. So, um, first things first um can you tell us a little bit more about your piece that you have a part of the show it's um one of the most different pieces it's actually a song can you tell us a little bit about like the background for that piece sure well i am sort of new to music i started learning my first instrument when i was about five six years ago so mm -hmm. After that, I started slowly putting together some songs and most of the content that inspires me is nature-based and people-based and a lot similar to my visual art. Um, so it was really natural for me to think about Staten Island and, and I love being on an island and I'm kind of obsessed with water and bodies of water and really feel drawn to them. So. It made a lot of sense for me to think about Staten Island in that way um, as an island that connects us, you know, through so much time and history and how much change happens quickly and how much change happens slowly. Uh, and, and that's what the song is about, you know, and it's about, you know, I always preface it by talking about Hurricane Sandy mm. uh, because uh, nature is so powerful and you know some it just goes from zero to 60 you know out of nowhere sometimes and it changes your whole life and that's really powerful and and I think that kind of power really connects the people on Staten Island and and probably in all sorts of places <laughs> that share our similar topiography uh, and I like it a lot and so I wrote a song about it <laughs> nice so that brings me um you actually said something that makes made me think about um, how does nature show up in your work and how does that affect your practice? Like you mentioned that you're also a visual artist. So how does that show up visually and sonically at times for you? Great question. Um, yeah, um, nature is constantly producing the most beautiful colors and patterns and ideas that I just feel as a humble human it I should really really look to it for all of my inspiration so the colors and patterns are constantly showing up in my artwork I like a obsessively collect things that nature discards, shells and rocks and things like that, and use that for inspiration on, in paintings, in backgrounds, um, in mood pieces. Uh, and the waves and the water of Staten Island have actually shown up in more than one of my songs. So that seems to be a, a running baseline. That's what I hear in my head. That's what the background in my music is. That's what I paint. Uh, and also <clears throat> that's what I, yeah, that's what I write about. Um, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> so it sounds like you explore a lot of different mediums. Like what, what are some of your favorite materials to work with? So it seems like you're working like, you know, sometimes pen and paper is like, you know, it has a lot of different dimension for someone like you. So like, what are some of your favorite mediums that you've been um, working with? Well, I started off as a painter. Um, mm -hmm. I went to college for painting uh, and I, for visual studio arts. And then um, when I realized I, I wasn't a great artist my whole life, it wasn't until I was in high school and I was doing pretty poorly at high school um, that I found art and fell in love with art and found this thing that I, made me feel good and made me feel like I could get involved with school. They gave me supplies, they gave me space, they gave me time, you know, like those are all things that artists really need in order to develop and be nurtured. And, you know, shout out to Curtis High School who broke a lot of rules. They let me take every art class, you know, and turns out in the end, you know, cause I don't know if you're familiar with the rules, but you only get to take 
uh, extracurriculars, like one in every different department. So you get to take one music class and one art class and so on and so forth. Um, so I took every art class that they had and they used to let me hang out on my off period in the art room. And then I ended up taking the art regents um, that nobody knew existed. I didn't know we had one. So apparently if you fulfill the credits, they just send you the regents, right? So the school just got a regents for me and they were like, uh, Kristen Lako, come to the office. <laughs> and then they told me, you gotta take this test because they sent it to you. And because of that test, I got recognized by the school. The school got grant money and I went to art college and I was like, this is a thing people do. And that was like literally the first time where I was like, ah, okay, I could be an artist. Um, and I went to school originally for illustration um, because that's where you can make money in art. And it was important to my family that I choose something to study that could potentially be career. <laughs> like they weren't gonna have me studying fine arts. You know, they weren't into that. Um, so I went to college and I did illustration, but then I was like, hold up, I gotta like draw and paint other people's ideas. And then they come back to you and they're like, no, nah, I don't like this thing, change it to another color. And I was not about that life at all. Um, so painting really became what it always was to me, which is just this expression of like this, this outlet for me, like where I was weird or I was this or I was that. And all of those things are valued in art, you know, all of that's all stuff you strive for. And so I really fell into it. And then, and you know, I, I've never made a living off my art. I usually do shows and do sell some stuff. I give stuff away, you know, that that's really where it is for me. And then when I got older, I realized that I, it occurred to me one day, like, Eureka, if you're creative, then you're creative, you know? And I'm always telling, I work a lot with children. You know, I do these I've, for six years, God willing, we'll be able to get back soon. But for six years, I've done a free Saturday art class at our local library. Right. So I get to like see all those people uh, in our community. Um, and I'm always telling them, I'm, uh, the little kids I work with every day too, that you don't have to be good at art to do it. You know, like that, that's, that's not what it's about. It's not what it's about for me. For me, art is the creation, is the process. It's the, that feeling that you get. And then you get to have a tangible result, which is pretty cool. Um, but it doesn't matter that it, that wasn't the journey. That's just the place you ended up. So I took that own advice and I started to think like, well, why can't I learn an instrument just because I'm 30 years old, you know? So I picked the easiest one I could <laughs> and I learned to play the ukulele. And then I was like, okay, I could, you know, I had, a, I tried to play some other instruments. So then I started picking up other instruments, you know, I, the bass and some percussion things and singing and then writing music. And then I thought, well, oh no. Yeah, then somebody asked, then Robin Lampman asked me to read poetry, read one of my songs at an event. And I was like, I don't read poetry. And I was like, why not, Clego? Why can't you be a poet too? This lady thinks that your song was poetry. She liked it so much, so why not? So then I started doing that. And then I got involved with Staten Island Shakespeare theater company because they were doing one of my favorite plays and I had never been in a play before. But then again, I thought to myself, why not? <laughs> like what's stopping you? The only thing stopping you is you because I put myself in this box that I was a visual artist, that I was a painter, you know, or a found object creator or something like that. Um, and I decided to let all of that go and like, any opportunity I have now to get involved with something creative, I just do it. And, you know, it's not that I feel like I'm good at all of those things. And it's not even when I'm doing it that I feel like I'm doing a great job, but you feel good doing, you know, like you have to, my dad always told me like, you got to make stuff. Like you gotta leave stuff in your wake. You know, you can't just float by. You gotta be a creator. You gotta have your hands in it. 
Um, and that's life to me, you know, like you gotta be doing stuff. You gotta be creating. It's been really hard um, over, you know, this whole lockdown pandemic um, business, but I'm luckily I was off for, you know, I was working at home for six months and then I went back to school. I teach preschool five days a week and it's like a blessing. It's just like life just like breathe right back into you. Like, oh, little people mm -hmm. thirsty for knowledge. And, you know, I get to like show them art and music and, and walk in Central Park with them for like. I was actually gonna ask you, how did like this quarantine affect your process? And like affect your work during this time? Um, you know, I'm like the opposite of what like, a lot, I feel like a lot of artists will tell you that the best art, and maybe, maybe I agree with this, but like the best art comes from like sadness and darkness and depression and like people working through that kind of thing. And, and I might agree with that, but once again, not trying to make bank on my <laughs> ideas, like art has always been a way for me to express like all of my emotions, you know? So like when I'm all packed down with like one thing, it's very, you know, the lockdown, like when you're like, get so into yourself, like I'm not inspired by myself. Like I cannot sit down and like, and that's why, you know, fine arts was never gonna work for me anyway. I'm not alone in a studio. That's not my thing. You know, the world, we talk, you know, we talked about nature. Like I need to see things. I need to hear things, you know, in order to be inspired. And it was really hard to create, um, create in when I had all the time in the world, you know? So I actually, I started reaching out for opportunities to do stuff for people like make other people stuff because if you give me a top thing, I I would like to, like if you give me content, I like the practice and the exercise of creating. Like, so even if I cannot come up with something and I feel like if I'm depressed or, or you know, life is heavy, like I often can't come up with my own thing, like, but I m miss doing it. You know, so like, once again, you don't have to be great at everything, you know, if you just practice the skills and, you know, I just ask people like, what do you want me to paint? Your dog, your friend, you know, your hands, just, just tell me, you know, and so I got a few of those projects done. Um, and we did participate in a couple, you know, music is the communities of art. Oh, well, yeah, you, you had a music project that you did a little bit, a lot, like, yeah, we did a few. Right? Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, we did a few um, covers. Who's we? Uh, Joey and I. My husband, my my art life partner, um, Patches, um, and I. You know, I guess it's easier to make music when you're locked up than visual art. <laughs> but um, yeah, because I, you know, I'm so lucky to have a partner who lives here with me. So like, he we can bounce off each other's energy and inspiration and he's such a talented musician and he's helped me so much um with the instrumentation but also just with the socialness of it and music like like i said like art you kind of do alone you know you take your inspiration from all over but music you music you can do with everybody you know and that's kind of cool about it um because musicians love to share their craft and that's neat and even though for like somebody who's new at it who doesn't feel confident and just being like let's do a jam session like <laughs> we can definitely meet on like these awesome things like cover songs and things that we love and we think would help people and inspire people during the time so we did do jesse bloom who lives in our house and he's a very talented world recognized musician who we super love because he's been grandfathered into my life. I've known him for like 20 years. So he supports all of our musical endeavors. Right. Did some, um, we did some songs with them. We did a 420 song. When I get low, I get high. Um, we also did a St. Patrick song, um, with the, the name escapes me at the moment. And Joey and I also did a Swibs cover. Swibs is another local musician about being locked up in your, with your feelings. Mm -hmm. And those are just kind of things we did and threw on the internet so that people would have something to look at that was positive. And then we were so lucky to be involved in the Westerly Festival. Uh, we recorded an original song for that. 
Um, and you know, that's just what I wanted to say about the different, the greatest part about being opening your creative branches what is, is being involved with the communities. Um, what is the Wesley Festival exactly? Oh, the Westerly Folk Festival is a annual festival that happens in Westerly Park, um, usually in late October. And uh, it's f folk musicians from Staten Island and all over the place. And it's this huge day event um, and it's organized by um, the Indelegato family and probably others, but that's who I'm familiar with. So I apologize to anybody who's involved in that. Um, so they, this year, Jessica and Delicato did a video version and she took clips from past years and testimonials of people who have been involved and also new music and spliced them all together into like a, a video. It's quite long. That's really dope. Um, that brings me to like one of my, um, there's one more question I want to ask because we're like um, getting towards like the end of the interview. I wanted to ask you, um, what has your experience been with being an artist on Staten Island? And like, you know, I won't even say an artist, a creative on Staten Island uh, or a multidisciplinary artist on Staten Island because you're, you have a lot of depth towards what your, your, your practice and your discipline. Um, it's the greatest gift has definitely been like, you're, I was always so afraid to step out and like that, it's an interesting thing to think about. It's like, yeah, so you want to be creative. You want to do new things, but you're entering like clicks, you know, you're entering like groups of people who are doing that thing all the time. And it's scary. And like, you know, I'm, I like to be liked and I like to belong to things. Um, and every time I have stepped out of my boundaries, I have been like welcomed like with the warmest, most loving people. And every time I say to myself, like these people have been my neighbors and I didn't even know, you know, like um, all the people who are down at Hub 17 and do their music and their creative stuff down there. Like we, you know, good that poetry brought me to all those people, you know, because I was reading at events and uh, that we were all at in the neighborhood in Stapleton and all those things. And then I, not this year, but last year I did the, um, I forget what it's called, the, the oh, Fem Fem Fest thing, you know, with the mermaids and oh, down. Yeah, Fem such a Fem Fest. <laughs> oh, no, right. Like. Oh, so close. Uh, you know, and just getting out there and doing different things brings you new opportunities that, that you never imagine. And I think that's, that's the greatest gift. Like we try to, we have our life, you know, and you, but you realize if you look closely that you, you go in the same circles, you see the same kind of people. And like the only way to branch out is to make yourself uncomfortable and to do things that you don't normally do that feel scary. And all of the, all of the groups on Staten Island have been crazy nice. You know, the uh, theater people have been super supportive. The poetry people, super supportive. I mean, I, I kind of feel like visual arts people are the hardest to get to get inside, but, and that's fine. Cause I don't want to know them. They don't want to know me. It's fine. Like that's, that's kind of like intrinsic to be a visual artist. You, you're a loner, you know, you do your own thing. That's, that's the motif. That's the stereotype. That's probably not true for everyone, but I, I feel it. Artists. I feel I'm it. brooding. Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, you know, I'm kind of the opposite of that in every way. You know, I'm like sunshine and happiness. I'm way too loud. I'm throwing it down, Kristen. You know, I'm energy level through the roof, like great for three-year-olds. <laughs> Fantastic, you know? So for up-and-coming artists, like, um, what advice would you give them? Um, don't be afraid of mistakes. Mistakes, people try to avoid making mistakes like it's going to be the death of them, but mistakes are where you grow. Mm. So if you're never making mistakes, then you're never learning anything about yourself. You're never growing and you're never going to get beyond what you think you should be, you mm. know, and, and people got to realize that they know so little, you know, you know nothing about what the future holds for you you know so little about your own potential. So if you're not testing yourself, if you're not pushing yourself, um, then you're missing out. Like, don't be afraid to be afraid. <laughs> and that's a quote. 
<laughs> That's a quote. Mic drop. End but, interview there. <laughs> actually, uh, towards the end. But before we go, is there anything else you want to talk about real quick, Clayco? Is there, um, and where can we find you? Website, Instagram handles and all that. Let the people know where we can find you. Okay, I'm, so I'm Kristen Lego Pachado, uh, better known as Clayco Pachado. Um, that's K-L-E-Y-K-O. And basically, if you search Clayco, you can find me everywhere. Um, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. Um, my partner and I, Joey Patches, uh, so we're Clayco and Patches. You can find our music uh, for free in the world, uh, anywhere you want. Clayco, K-L-E-Y-K-O and Patches, the traditional spelling. Um, we made an, an album called Animal Bones. You can find it on Bandcamp, iTunes, all the stuff where people listen to music. And, you know, I guess I'd like to say if you're an artist and you want to work with, on something, reach out. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Thank you so much again, Clayco, for taking the time out to speak with us. It's been quite a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.